If you happen to have viewed one of the previous versions of this course here on Pluralsight, you would have enjoyed watching me torture myself getting all the installation and dependency configurations just right. There was a lot that could go unexpectedly wrong with the process, and the hardest part was that what went wrong for one installation was never exactly the same as the troubles I'd have with the next. Among other things, this meant that my demos probably wouldn't be all that useful for someone carefully watching the course and then trying to install the software locally. That was then. But this time around, I've got some absolutely terrific news for you. The good people at Greenbone have released an official set of Docker container images for installation, and it works like a dream. The magic of containers is that they permit exact reproduction not just of code, but of entire file systems and server environments. So it won't matter what you happen to have installed on your host machine, as long as Docker Engine is running, all the important pieces will work together nicely. Right now, 22.4 is the latest Greenbone OpenVAS version, so this is the page you'll want to guide you through the installation steps. You'll need to be running one of these four Linux distributions on your host, but that could be in a virtual machine running in VirtualBox or something similar. That host, obviously, will also need to have both Docker and Docker Compose installed. Here's how that will look on Ubuntu. Keep these hardware requirements in mind when you plan your host, by the way. Once you've got OpenVAS installed, launching the containers will happen through this rather long, YAML-formatted Docker Compose file. Just copy the contents and paste them into a file called docker-compose.yml in your host. Of course, you should never just run scripts you copy from the internet. Always read them through to make sure there's nothing dangerous there. But first, you need to actually get the Docker images. All the way at the bottom of the page, you'll find this command for downloading and setting the mode of the setup script file. And then this command will, after you carefully look the script over, run it. This will take a few minutes, as there's a great deal of downloading going on. I pause the video through most of the boring stuff. When that's done, you paste the text of that Docker Compose YAML file. Listing the contents of the current directory shows me that there are indeed now two scripts present and accounted for. This next command will reference the Docker Compose script to actually launch all the containers. While that's going, I should note that you might sometimes need to run this script after a host reboot. It may look like everything launched again on its own when you restart, but you could be missing one or more individual containers. There are, as you can see from this docker ps command, supposed to be seven in total. You might want to create a script using that greenbone community edition up command to make things easier for yourself. There's one more piece of business to get past before we can open up the OpenVAS UI in a browser. You'll need to create a password for your admin user. That'll work through a simple gvmd command, but where should you run it? Remember, you didn't install the software on your host, it's actually living inside seven different containers. So it'll have to work using docker exec. I'll point exec to the container named greenbone community edition underscore gvmd underscore one. The command itself will identify a user, admin in this case, and give it the new password, admin. But you must promise me never to use such a dumb and insecure password in any real deployments of your own. By the way, you can substitute that gvmd command for cat slash var slash log slash gvm slash gvmd dot log in order to print out log entries. That can be really helpful for troubleshooting problems. Now all that's left is to open up a browser, enter the IP address of your host machine followed by a colon, and the port number 9392. Since this isn't an encrypted session, you'll have to bypass your browser's warnings, but soon enough, you'll be greeted by the Happy Dinosaur login page. You'll enter your username and password, and you'll be in. That really wasn't so hard, was it? Just keep in mind that OpenVAS is still downloading and indexing vulnerability definitions in the background. While everything looks great on the surface, it may be an hour or so before you'll be able to actually trigger a scan. 
by way of a quick module review, an OpenVAS scan is defined as a task, which is made up of a target, scanner engine, and scan config, along with optional details like alerts, schedules, and login credentials. Vulnerability scans use network vulnerability tests to look for any known vulnerabilities that might have an impact on your system. Installation using Greenbone's official Docker images is fairly straightforward, but we will sometimes need to dig into running containers for administrative tasks like updating a password or viewing system logs. Finally, each time you restart your host, you should make sure all the necessary containers are up and running. In the next module, we'll get a good look at all the key elements necessary for a successful scan. Find this useful? Why not follow the link in the description and head over to view the complete course on Pluralsight. And of course, for even more technology goodness, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.